First thing you're going to want to do is get some 1 inch by 4 inch lumber and cut that down into more manageable sizes, just a hair over 13 inches long. Now there's many different ways to cut a 45 degree angle to make a box, so use whatever method works best for you. I'm going to be using my table saw here and I just want to make sure that when both angles are cut that the board on the long end is going to be right at 13 inches. After you cut four pieces and before you continue to do more, um, I would recommend just lining them up to make sure that things do come together nicely to fit into a square. Here I'm going to be cutting a channel into the wood and I would say it's about half an inch from the top and you're going to make sure the blade is set to go about 3 eighths of an inch deep. For this step you're only going to be doing this to one out of every four of your pieces of wood. So I'm going to be using a 1 4th inch up spiral bit and I'm going to be sliding that right through the middle of the channel that we just cut out in the previous step. And then I'm going to be going all the way across and what this is going to allow me to do is slide things in and out of my box. And here's what it should look like when it's done. Now if you didn't care about being able to swap out designs you could just skip this step entirely. I'm now going to be painting the inside of these pieces and below that channel that we cut out white and that's just going to help the LED lights reflect and bounce off and be a little bit brighter. And this is the step too where if you did want to paint the uh, outside a different color to match whatever uh, decor or look you're going for, you could do that at this step as well. But for the sake of time I'm just leaving everything that natural wood color on the outside. In hindsight, I probably should have done this step before I painted, but it still worked out fine. I'm going to be using that same 1 4th inch up spiral bit and cutting out a notch into the bottom of each piece of wood. And this notch is going to be about, I would say, 1 4th inch deep. And this is going to allow me to put something on the back to make sure that the light doesn't come through and have it flush with the wood. So this step is definitely not necessary since you could easily tape some type of material to the back so that light doesn't escape. But since I have the tool, I'm going to be using it. When you start putting these boxes together, make sure that one of the four pieces is the one that you cut all the way through. And I won't be doing anything fancy, I'm just going to be using some basic Gorilla wood glue and some painter's tape to secure it while it dries. So for this project I am going to be using some WS2812B LED lights and I'm going to be controlling them using an ESP8266 Wi-Fi board. And as for how will they turn on, I will be using a 5 volt 60 amp 300 watt power supply. Now if what I just said is a little bit overwhelming, I'm going to leave a link in the description to a previous project of mine that I did where with just a slight modification to the box you can get away with using just your average GoV LED strip lights. So what I'm doing right here is I'm trying to figure out how many LEDs I need per box and once I figure that out I can just cut four more identical lengths. Now the fun begins of getting everything wired up and I'm going to be using some 18 gauge silicone wires for my power and ground and then some 20 gauge silicone wire for my data. And what I like about silicone wires is they're a lot more flexible than the other kind, so if you're working in tight spaces and need to make sharp corners, these are going to be a lot easier to do that with. With how I plan on wiring this together, I'm going to be measuring out about 15 inches of these three wires and cutting it, and then I'm actually going to need to do that about nine more times. Here 
Here I'm just stripping and twisting the wires and then I'm going to be tinning the ends before I attach them to the controller. In this step I'm going to be applying some solder to the three pins on the controller that I'm going to be connecting the wires to. The one I'm doing right here is the VIN pin and that's where your red or voltage wire is going to go. The one right next to it is for your ground, the GND, and then the last one is going to be where your data wire goes, that's on the other side and that's the D4 post. And after these three wires are connected, I would recommend using some heat shrink tubes um, to put around the posts and the wire so that there's nothing exposed. What I discovered in one of my previous projects is if your first LED is not relatively close to the controller, you're going to have some flickering issues. So to fix that, you can install one LED that's pretty close to the controller and then use the wire to run it from that first one to where your LED strip begins in the box. Now that we have the controller connected to that first LED, we're going to get this connected to our power supply. And please make sure that you do not have this plugged in and turned on while you're doing this step. In this step I'm going to be taking one of those 15 inch wires that we've already previously cut and it looks like I've already tinned them here. I'm going to be connecting that to the other end of that first LED connected to the controller. Now the other end of those wires I'm going to be connecting to my first long strip of LEDs that's going to be going in the first box. So right now I'm just installing the LED strip into the first box and you're going to notice at the end of this LED strip I've already soldered on another set of 15 inch wires. And now for a quick test to make sure that everything's working so far. This is going to be my second box and what you're going to notice is this LED strip um, I've soldered on 15 inch wires on the front and the back, but they're not connected to anything yet. So I'm going to do this with all of the boxes, and then at the end, I'll show you how I'm going to connect them all together. Now I didn't show this step in the video, but you'll see I have a voltage and a ground wire connected to different pins on the supply unit, and this is going to be providing power injection at the end of the LED strip that I have soldered on. To connect everything together, I'm going to be using some wire nuts to twist together the wires from the end of the LED strip to the beginning of the next one. And I decided to do it this way without soldering things together because I wanted to easily be able to untwist things and if I wanted to move the boxes around, maybe stack them vertical versus horizontally, maybe add boxes or remove boxes down the road, this is going to allow me to quickly and easily do that. Now these last two wires that you'll see here are connected to the very end of the last LED strip and this is running all the way back into the power supply and these are my injection wires. Now for a quick check to make sure everything's hooked up correctly. For the backing I'm just using some poster board that I got at a store. This is white on one side and it's cardboard um, and I'm just cutting out 12 inch squares and then fitting this in the back groove that we cut out using that router bit and you'll see how it fits together nicely. This is just going to make sure that the light stays in and that it doesn't seep out the back. Once the squares are cut out, just make sure that you're putting the white side down and then the corner where the wires are coming out, I'm just going to cut a little piece off so that they slide through there nicely.
Now moving on to the fun part of making the actual designs. I ended up buying a Cricut Maker machine. Now if you don't want to spend this much on something, my advice is to just reach out to your friends and ask if anyone has this. They are super popular and my guess is you'll know at least one or two people that do have one. This is one of the more expensive models, but they definitely have some lower priced options as well. You can also go the Facebook market route, just search for vinyl decals and you're going to see a lot of people locally that you can just send your picture to and they'll be able to print out the vinyl image. And lastly, Etsy is another place you could look at to get this done. Now I'm going to be showing you a couple different ways to do this yourself. I'm a big Mandalorian fan, so I'm going to be searching for Mandalorian Digital SVG. Click on images and find one that catches your eye. I really like this one here, and this is the one that I want to use first. Now an SVG file is just a digital image that the Cricut Maker is able to read. And this image here is going to be $3.99. Once it's downloaded, you can upload it to the Cricut Design software. And you can see there's all three images here. I only want that top left one, so I'm going to delete the other two so I can just work with the one I want. Drag the corner to make it as large as you can to fit the 12 by 12 inch cutting square. Next, you can just move the image to make sure it's in the center before clicking continue. Now all that's left is to choose vinyl as your material. You can choose the pressure, default or more works well, and then press go on the machine. Here's what it looks like cutting the image and as you can see what I just went through was super simple and I think that's what makes these Cricut machines so popular is they're just very easy to use and there's not much of a learning curve. Here you can see what it looks like after the cuts have been made. Before we move on to the next step, I'm going to show you a different way that this can be done. Again, search for Mandalorian or whatever image you like. Find one that sticks out, but this time make sure that it has a white background. Right click on the image and save it as a PNG file. Now I want you to go to Google and search for PNG to SVG converter, and it should be the top one that you can click on. Click Convert Files, find the image that you just saved, and upload it. Next, simply click Convert, and it's going to change that PNG image to an SVG file. You can then download it, and we'll be able to upload that to our Cricut Design software. From here, we're just going to be doing the exact same thing that we did with the other Mandalorian image that we just cut out. Now it's time to take that image that was just cut out and what you're going to do is remove pieces of vinyl where you want the light to shine through. Now despite this being somewhat time consuming and tedious, especially depending on the detail of the image that you made, this is probably one of my favorite parts. Now that we have everything weeded out the way we'd like, it's time to use transfer tape to pull this image off the piece of paper that it's on. And this again can be a little bit time consuming because you want to go slowly and make sure that it's pulling up all the vinyl and not leaving anything behind. Now that the picture is completely on the transfer tape, I'm going to be applying it to a 12 inch by 12 inch clear stencil sheet. To prevent getting any bubbles, you're going to want to put one drop of dish soap in a spray bottle and fill the rest up with water. Make sure to spray that stencil sheet really well um, and then also spray the back side of the image with that same mixture. Next take a little bit of time to line up that image directly in the center of that 12 inch by 12 inch stencil sheet. And once everything's perfectly centered, take your squeegee and begin to push the water out the sides. Once everything is squeegeed, you can cut off any excess material that's hanging over the edge of the 12 by 12 inch stencil sheet. You can wait to let things dry a little bit, but you really don't have to. You can start taking off that transfer tape. It might take you a little bit of time to get that corner started, but once you do, just peel back and again make sure that none of the vinyl uh, is sticking to that transfer tape when you pull it off.
Now I'll do the other image that we cut out, so I'll make sure this goes super fast, but we're going to be doing the exact same thing we just did. So this is the fun part where my crazy idea comes together. I'm very easily able to slide the acrylic into the box through the top. Some of you may be wondering why I just didn't put the vinyl image on the acrylic itself. Well each of these acrylic pieces is about $10 so that could get pretty expensive if I want to change things up over time. Instead I'm able to slide those images that I have on the stencil sheets right in front of the acrylic through that same hole and have the exact same effect. Maybe after a while I get tired of that white background, so I can easily remove that white piece of acrylic. And in my previous video, I found this black LED see-through acrylic that looked amazing. So maybe I want to slide that in there and put the vinyl image back in front of it to completely change the look. I went a little bit crazy and I made about 30 different images including 5 different scenes. So I hope you enjoy the final pictures and videos. I'm a little nervous I just realized 